gentlemen, congratulations on this beautiful documentary. My first question for you is how did you find out first about Anthony and his story? Were you one of the millions that saw his viral video? Um, actually, we are claim to fame as we saw it before it went viral. Yeah, Jamie Patrickoff, one of our producers at Hunting Lane, who I've worked with on and off for like 20 years, uh, texted me the video. And at the time, it was before it went viral. It didn't say Anthony's name. It didn't say a country. It didn't have much information. And he didn't even say, let's make a film. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think he knew that I would go dig. And uh, me and one of my researchers just went down the rabbit hole of the internet and chased who posted what and found him. And uh, I think it went viral like, a week later and everyone wanted to do it, but we had not jumped on the bandwagon and just were so curious about this kid and his confidence and wanted to know his story. And then started putting it together and connected with Kachi and we partnered up and, uh, you know, just, it was important to have a uh, collaboration of cultures, we, we, we call it. I love that. What about you, Kachi? How did you, was was it that it was your first exposure to Anthony through Matt? Um, I mean, there were there were some sort of like stories circulating, but I, I didn't really have all the all the gist. But, you know, one of those days in 2020, we were also like recovering from the mm -hmm. pandemic. And then I got this uh, random email, you know, about <laughs> the project, you know, and if I would be interested in discussing it further. And, um, you know, I responded, connected with, with Matt, and they shared it with me. And it was actually through that co conversation that I went for the first time to Ajam Gwadi mm -hmm. and met with with uh, with Anthony. And, you know, as I say, um, I mean, just meeting him and talking to him and hearing his story, obviously in a lot of ways, you know, um, Matt and I have discussed this a few times, how his story a lot of ways reflected my story as a documentary filmmaker um, out of Nigeria. Uh, doing something that no one expects, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, treading that sort of unknown path, but yeah. daring to do it anyways. And I it, it resonated with me and I was like, yeah, let's let's make this film and let's let's do it. That's amazing. What was it for I mean Kachi, you stole the next question right out of my mouth, but what for it for you, Matt, was the thing that because I know as a as a filmmaker, you're always getting pitches, you're always coming across cool viral videos or cool articles. What was it about Anthony that made you say, I have to tell this story? Well, I, I mean, it was interesting because it wasn't, like I said, viral yet. And so it was kind of like pure. And uh, I just, you know, I come from a place of curiosity and um, there was something about his body language. You know, it wasn't just the juxtaposition of, a kid dancing, um, you know, against a background that was, you know, a little more impoverished. It was, it was just more about the kid, you know, it was more about Anthony and like just drawn to him in my gut, you know, it made me feel something, you mm -hmm. know, and um, I wanted to know more. And then when I first connected with him, I think I, it was a zoom. He's sitting in his courtyard that you see in the film with his mom and yeah. family and uh, and then I, you know, was looking for a collaborator and I I came across a, a wonderful VR film called Daughters of Chibok that Kachi had done. And there was something in it that I just thought was special. And then when I connected with him, similar to Anthony, I just felt it, right? And especially when Kachi, you know, he just has a very thoughtful approach. Mm -hmm. And I... He said it already, but he connected with Anthony because it reminded him of himself, right? Doing something that's ballet, documentary filmmakers, that's not generally, you know, the path you take anywhere. But, you know, like Kachi, I don't want to put words in his mouth, said in Nigeria. And I just, you know, just felt it, you know, and I was like, let's go make this film. That's amazing. I mean, I would love, I would love to hear a little bit more about how how the collaboration of cultures worked out on this documentary and how how you kind of both pulled from y'all's very unique, distinct experiences to tell such a beautiful, co beautifully cohesive story about Anthony. 
I'd kick that to Kachi coming from. <laughs> um, I mean, it was a great experience. Um, my, uh, you know, Matt comes with a lot of experience um, and, you know, a different background from myself. And I, I, you know, obviously, you know, acknowledge the fact that, and I, you know, really appreciate the fact that, you know, in thinking about it, it was important to get uh, a a voice from from Anthony's home, you know, mm -hmm. which is sort of like what I represent and, and bring to the table. And so that combination of his experience um, and my knowledge of the environment and the, the nuances, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think, you know, was what made this a very unique project um, for us. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it, with, with any collaboration like this, you, you know, you have your highs and lows and your challenges, you know, but one thing that kept us all going was sort of like this staying focused on the vision and, mm -hmm. and staying true to telling Anthony's story in a very authentic way. I think, you know, the fact that we were so inspired by this young kid and watching him literally transform right in front of our eyes, you know, and, and evolve and, you know, from this shy, you know, young, um, kid to this sort of like confident um, teenager, you know, in the space of a year and a half to it was just some remarkable. And so when you have those down days and you're like, Ugh, what's going on here? You remember why you're doing it, right? And and that makes you say, okay, yeah, let's 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 pick up the camera. Let's let's go back tomorrow. I love <laughs> so, it. Yeah, and I'd say like we each could have made this film, but I I, I mean I think we both felt together we we made something really special. Like I, we learned a lot from each other, you know, um, in different ways, you know, uh, we learned a lot from Anthony. I learned a lot about the culture in Nigeria and the nuances from, from Kachi. And I don't know, it was, a uh, all documentaries are challenging. Um, this was just a really special one. Um, he also learned a lot about Jalof Rice. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's my favorite. I introduced him to the culture and the food. Absolutely. <laughs> and the culture is just so wonderful and vibrant. And yeah. I don't know. Fell in love with uh, Nigeria. Yeah, I was lucky enough. I have a lot of friends from high school who are Nigerian. And yeah, that was the word that came to my mouth is or came to my mind was vibrant and vivid. So I, I think you you both did such a beautiful job of portraying that and honoring that on screen. I have so much respect for documentarians because you're finding the narrative usually as you go rather than, you know, with a feature film or, you know, where someone does 80 rewrites of a draft and then you make it. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the discoveries you made while making Madhu? Oh my God, so many. <laughs> I mean, Kachi, right? I think at the very beginning when we started, he hadn't even gotten the scholarship to, to yeah. Elmhurst in Birmingham. Like, you know, that he had gotten because of the viral video interest and you know we felt together with our producers and Disney plot Disney that he's gonna go somewhere something's gonna happen but Disney believed in him as a character in a story um that's why you'll see in the well I don't want to give too much away spoiler alerts but uh yeah, I mean, we're there every step of the way. We're there when he says goodbye to his family and packs up. And, you know, there is a, Kachi, I don't know if we want to give this away, but like there is a wrinkle that happens, a challenge, a physical challenge that he has to deal with when he gets to England that could derail his dreams. And we were literally there when it happened. Like me and Kachi are looking at the monitor and saying something's going on like you'll see it in the film but um yeah like a lot of things we didn't know was going to happen i think with, with with docs is really just so like why i find making docs so fascinating and exciting it's just like the beauty of the unknown mm -hmm. right and and being open to that um you know you go into a doc you think you have this preconceived ideas of well oh, i think this is what the story is going to be um but then things start to happen. And one thing that we also sort of like did with this and, you know, was embracing that, you know, um, embracing those surprises and and those unexpected things and 
converting them into a more powerful and more authentic story. So, uh, so yeah, it's a great experience doing this. I, you know, I wouldn't trade this experience for anything else. It's... That's wonderful. And then, you know, the ride's only kind of just beginning because your film is opening the Santa Barbara Film Festival this week. What does it mean to you to have your documentary open such a prestigious festival and for it to be the opening night selection that kicks everything off? I mean, I, I mean, the, the one thing is that they chose a documentary to open the festival is really special. It shows, you know, not just with me and Kachi and Madhu, but it shows how far documentaries have come and that it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about storytelling. You know, a narrative is not above a documentary. A documentary is not a stepping stone to um, a narrative. It's, they're all stories, you know, and they're all character driven. They all have universal human themes. And I, I just think it's really special that um, that Santa Barbara International Film Festival kind of recognized our film and had enough confidence in it to open up their whole festival. Um, I think and that's for me as, to me. Yeah, I mean, and for me as a, as a Nigerian filmmaker out of Nigeria, and this is a Nigerian story, I think this is a big deal. Um, not just for me, but but also for filmmakers back home, doc filmmakers back home, because um, you know, making docs anywhere in the world is not easy. Uh, but in Nigeria, especially, I think it's like you know, it's really tough, right? Um, but being able to take a story like this out of Nigeria and put it on the global stage, you know, and and have it premiere at a festival of this stature is really it sends a message back home. And um, it's, you know, I, I take it as a, both as a personal and a collective honor um, for um, not just myself, but also for other young filmmakers back home in Nigeria that, you know, it's, it's possible, you know, to chase that dream. And that's what really the story is about anyways, you know, like, you know, chase that dream, you know, don't, don't, don't ever think that it's, it can happen. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm truly honored. Can't wait to to be there. Be oh, man. <laughs> I'm congratulate y'all in person. Uh, my last quick question, it's Wednesday night or it's March. You know, we, we had the premiere of the film at Santa Barbara, the docs out on Disney Plus. How do you hope people feel after viewing Madhu? I mean, in, for me, it's sort of what Kachi just said. I, I mean, this film being put out, whether it's opening night at Santa Barbara, um, other screenings and when it launches on Disney on March 29th is like the Anthony story being inspiring um, for anyone with a dream or a dream they think is impossible, whether it's being a ballet dancer or being a doc filmmaker. Um, you know, it. I hope that that's what it encourages. You know, I kind of align with Kachi on that. Um for people anywhere, but especially that encouragement in uh, in 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 Nigeria. Yeah, there to chase your dreams, man. That's I think that's what it is about. And and seeing this young kid, and when you watch the film, you understand how how monumental this is. This isn't a kid from a rich background. He doesn't have. He didn't go to any fancy school. You know, um, he just found this passion off of YouTube, and pursued it off of YouTube and dancing on the streets and no one gave him a second chance, right? You know, no one thought he would, he would be able to make it. And just seeing how he, you know, overcame all those obstacles um, and, and got to where he is today is really, really inspiring. I really hope that it, it inspires people across ages and, and across, you know, different spheres of life. You know, it's the same principle applied to whatever it is that you do. Um, so yeah, I, I hope people love it and are inspired by it. Well, thank that's my time. Thank you two so much. It was so lovely to hear about the film before I get to see it on Wednesday. And um, it's so funny because my mom's coming up with me to Santa Barbara and I was trying to see which ones, which um, movie she would want to come see with me. And as soon as I said Madhu and described it, she's like, oh yeah. I want <laughs> she's not an industry person and she's very excited. So thank you so much. Thank you.